Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. I want to do a class out of chapter 17, which is the new way of worshiping God. Now, we've already done a class on, or a Bible study out of section 3, but I wanted to go on to section 4. Um, you can see there are 14 sections to this chapter. It's the, I believe it's the longest chapter in the book. That one down that benefits your effects of practicing prayer. That's also another chapter. I couldn't make uh, Microsoft Word Act right. But we're going to jump down here to um, to uh, section four. But again, we have section three. So um, jump over there and check that one out too. Um, but let's jump down there and see what we come up with. We'll see what the file gives us, I should say. All right, for those of you who are uh, new to our channel, we have um, the Third Testament of the Bible, and we are teaching from that. This is the Third Testament of the Bible. You can look, by, look and find a link to a free PDF that you can read or download to your computer or have printed or whatever. <clears throat> it's, um, no hard copies have been identified yet to purchase, uh, but we're still looking for the hard copy. But um, and there's also a link to the audio book. Now, Harmus Academy is not affiliated with the idea of, of these groups other than we share interest in this in the uh, scripture there. So <clears throat> we're going to come all the way down to chapter 17 of the Third Testament of the Bible, all the way down to verse 45, where we're going to talk about the four aspects of true prayer. Four aspects of true prayer. We're going to break prayer down here a little bit. So you may want to take notes, kind of deal. You know, there's people who say that they, they take notes, and, and you know, this may be a good time. I don't know. All right, let's go. Verse 45: Struggle to reach spiritual perfection. I have shown you the road to reach that goal. I have given you prayer, a weapon more powerful than any material one, so that you can defend yourself from the trials of the road but you will have the best weapon when you obey my law now he's it's a lot in these verses here this is the third testament of the bible this is spirit and truth this is serious information being given to us in the form of scriptural text and you know i i'm not uh prepared enough to break it down completely but let's look at some of the stuff in here like right there at the very end where he says you will have the best weapon when you obey my law now the best weapon of course is he's talking about prayer this whole section is about prayer the best weapon he's saying is prayer when you obey my law kind of like a if statement you know you really only have this weapon available to you when you obey the laws where I'm understanding there but look up there at the beginning where he says struggle to reach spiritual perfection now, one of the ways you reach spiritual perfection is through obedience to the law. The, the obedience to those instructions, remember, the word law is a substitution for the word Torah. Torah means law, and Torah is also um, means instruction. So the words law, instruction, and Torah are all the same word when you're talking, you know, in, in, when you're talking about the Bible and what it says and such. So... <clears throat> The spiritual perfection is through the law. He says, I have shown you the road to reach that goal. Now, he's talking about the Old and the New Testaments, you know. And, you know, I'm stressed to tell you that um, you need all three Testaments. You know, it's necessary to have the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament. Um, this is not a substitution by any means. The Third Testament is the third part of the trilogy. It's what's um, completing the, the, the cipher so to speak but let me go he says I have given you prayer a weapon more powerful than any material one now he's serious prayer is, has stopped nuclear wars has stopped uh, trains prayer has um, saved people you know that is you know no way possible they should have survived prayer um, has stopped bullets 
this prayer has stopped bullets from you know people just shooting flat out the gun malfunction or the bullet missed or it hit him 17 times in his chest but it just so happened to not hit any vital organs yeah he's still he's okay now kind of deal <clears throat> prayer is is more powerful than any of these weapons um let me go on so that you can defend yourselves from the trials on the road okay now He's talking about this journey we're on, but you will have the most powerful weapon. All right, <clears throat> let's see what 46 says. 46 says, what does prayer consist of? Prayer is petition, intercession, adoration, and contemplation. Each of the parts are necessary and one springs from the other. For truly I tell you that petitioning means that man pleads with me to concede to him what he wishes to satisfy the yearnings that he believes to be the most important and healthiest of his life. Truly I tell you, my children, that the Father hears the petitions and gives to each one that which he most needs as long as it is for his own good. But be careful about asking for that which is in opposition to the salvation of your spirit for those who seek only for material gifts, material pleasures, or earthly power, or asking for chains for their spirit. <laughs> so that's why we started doing this kind of um, Bible study where we break these long verses down. Okay, I'm not going to hit every part of it because I read it all, but let, let's skim through and see what 46 says. First of all, it says prayer is petition, intercession, adoration, and contemplation. Now, if you took the time to get your pencil and paper out, like we mentioned earlier, put these as big headings because he's going to he's he's um he's going to break this down. Now, now notice how he says each of the parts are necessary, but then he says one springs from the other. One springs from the other. First, you have petition, and then you have intercession. Then after you get the intercession, then comes adoration, and once you, at a point where you, uh, where you adore the Father as, as as you know you should be, then comes contemplation. Kind of you know, let's let's talk about it in the comments. Give me give me give me a comment on this. Let's hammer it out. It says um, petitioning means that man pleads with me to concede to him what he wishes. Meaning petitioning is when you ask for something. That's one of the parts of the prayer is is to ask. That's a that's one kind of prayer. Um, what does he say up there? Well, the title of this section was four aspects of true prayer. Prayer. So, um, one of the aspects of prayer is when you're asking for something. People are like, well, I thought that's the only reason why you're supposed to pray is to ask for something. Well, you know, and that's that's fine. Um, we're going to learn a couple of uh, we're going to learn a few more here. He, he's pleading to satisfy the yearnings that he believes to be most important and healthiest of his life. So we're pleading for the things that we want and need. He says, truly I tell you, my children, that the Father hears the petitions and gives to each one that which he most needs as long as it is for his own good. So <clears throat> now, even though you may need it, it may not be for your own good and then you won't get it this way. I'm understanding that. He says, be careful about asking for that which is in opposition to the salvation of your spirit. For those who ask only for material gifts, material pleasures, or earthly power are asking for change for their spirit. Now, this is important. This is important here. We talk about he's, you, you're asking or he's asking for change for your spirit. Because um, of what he's going to say next in verse 47. He's talking about our earthly, the things that that we want and need down here on the earth, and I don't want to call out anything because you know even though I may be able to name seventy five different things, I'm going to miss seven billion. It's, it's, it's all of the earthly um, pleasures um, and you know different things that we want down here earthly material, meaning you can touch it, you can feel it, you can see it, you can taste it, you can hear it, you know kind of deal. But he says, um, <clears throat> you're asking, if you ask for those things, those material things, then what you're asking for is change for your spirit. You're asking, you know, to be held back, kind of like that, you know, okay, 
you're going to sit here and beg for this car all of your life, you, you know, you're going to get this car, and then after you go on, you know, um, this car is going to still have an effect on you. But I believe he says it right here in the verse, so I'm going to let him say it. But before we go on, let's have a word from our sponsor. Are you or someone you love suffering from symptoms of sadness, meanness, lust or covetousness, anger or violent temper, lying or untrustworthiness, foolishness, pride or anger, or hatred? Do you ever wonder if you are worthy of those good things you desire? If so, you may be suffering from chronic doubtfulness disorder. Chronic doubtfulness is a mental attitude disorder that affects how you think towards and react to life's challenges. The symptoms of chronic doubtfulness disorder are perfidiciousness or unbelief, incontinence or the lack of self-restraint, infidelity or unfaithfulness, or deceitfulness. Some of the causes of chronic doubtfulness disorder are ignorance of scriptural truths. Chronic doubtfulness disorder affects millions of people around the world and if untreated can lead to relationship issues, unsuccessfulness, and a spiritual death. But do not worry, there is hope. Introducing the Shepherd of Hermas. The Shepherd of Hermas is Holy Scripture that teaches the principles of the Angel of Repentance. Reading, practicing, and applying these principles regularly will strengthen your spirit with the whole armor of God. This spiritual cloak of protection is woven throughout with essential virtues like faith, self-restraint, power, and patience. The Shepherd of Hermas is all you need to combat and cure chronic doubtfulness disorder. Guaranteed. Side effects will include simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, trustworthiness. Prolonged use will cause the understanding of others, concord or harmony, and charity. Disclaimer. The actual book of the Shepherd of Hermas must be read frequently for real and lasting effects. Do not stop reading the Shepherd of Hermas or practicing its teachings before consulting the Creator. Verse 47. Material pleasures bring only suffering. Not only in this world, but even after the transition to the spiritual world. For the influence of those material desires can reach even to that place. And on being unable to free oneself from them, one is tormented by those yearnings. And wishes a thousand and one times to bring to the earth to be reincarnated and continue living materially. Now, see, this is the part last night while I was... You know, listening to scripture, you know, um, this is the verse that basically prompted this class here is because he talks about, to me, what I understood then is that the things that we are attached to here on the earth, all of the material pleasures, all of the, you know, if we somehow don't separate ourselves from the yearnings of those things while we're here on the earth that we're going to find ourselves in the spirit world meaning dead and gone still yearning after these things to the point where we are asking over and over he says a thousand times over and over to return to the earth to come back to earth and be reincarnated as a baby start all over again start all over you know have to walk another you know lifetime here on the, on the earth Ne never mind the higher dwelling places. Never mind, you know, the, the, the future that, you know, the, this is the first stop, guys. Or human being humans is the first stop. What about the other stops? It's like, you want to, we want to continue being humans just so we have, just so we can have those materialistic pleasures. And, you know, I could imagine he's talking about, um, um, not only houses and cars and, jewelry and good looks and you know uh, but you know he, he could also be talking about stuff like food and and the drugs and liquors and um different things like that if you sit here and you love mcdonald big macs 
that much that you you know you have to have them here on a daily basis you can't go one you know day uh, uh, much less a whole week without you know eating you know your favorite cheeseburger then maybe after you have gone on to the spirit world and are now you know ready to go to higher dwelling places you are sitting back thinking about the cheeseburger and actually want to be reborn just so you can come back and go to McDonald's you know and, and that cheeseburger sounds kind of funny but you know what 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 is what would be worth it I mean once you understand if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I talk about the higher dwelling places the higher mansions if you don't understand it's fine that's fine you may be new to Hermes Academy you may not have gotten around to listening to a lot of classes maybe you haven't read uh, the third testament of the Bible or the other ones for that matter and that's okay okay but if you if, if you understand the eschatology and what the scripture says is actually going to happen stressing what the scripture says now what coaching the fight says or you know anybody else for that matter but what the Bible says that the father's plan will be you know your choices should should show it your choices should should line up you know and that's my opinion if not you know I realize there are guys on the opposite side you know you know I do believe I do know about that but you know I don't think they listen to old coach you know what I mean all right but let's go on therefore my children ask only for that which you really need for the good of your spirits all right and then this part has a lot to it too it's kind of like you know saying don't ask for bad stuff ask for good stuff but you know what what is this good what what are, what are some of the things that he's talking about when he say good for your spirits well a little bit of a tangent he's talking about like you would pray for more opportunities to do charitable deeds you would pray for more opportunities to um, help people like widows and, and orphans and Levi's and you know poor people and homeless and that such you would you would ask for um, a better ways to pray and to communicate with him you would ask for um, obedience and how you can you know understand what he's requiring you to do as far as his word is concerned those things are good for the spirit and sit there and, and pray for those kind of things instead of praying for a better job or praying for more money or praying for you know that kind of thing now I would say before I you know get back on track I would say that health would be on the cusp of that where you know you're praying for not only your health you know but you're praying for the health of others is kind of you know on a borderline and there may be some others that's right there in the middle you can't really say that they're, they're not spiritual when you pray for one's health and there may be some others but I'm gonna get on but before we go on let's have a word from our sponsor introducing the Shepherd of Hermes the Shepherd of Hermes is holy scripture that teaches the principles of the angel of repentance Reading, practicing, and applying these principles regularly will strengthen your spirit with the whole armor of God. This spiritual cloak of protection is woven throughout with essential virtues like faith, self-restraint, power, and patience. The Shepherd of Hermes is all you need to combat and cure chronic doubtfulness disorder. Guaranteed. Side effects will include simplicity, innocence, chastity, cheerfulness, trustworthiness prolonged use will cause the understanding of others concord or harmony and charity disclaimer the actual book of the Shepherd of Hermes must be read frequently for real and lasting effects do not stop reading the Shepherd of Hermes or practicing its teachings before consulting the Creator okay yeah cuz that closes up the first part of prayer which is petition look at verse 48 the second form of prayer intercession springs from love of one's neighbor from the love that I showed you as master when I came to the world pray for your brothers both near and far for those in nations suffering the consequences of war and those suffering the tyranny of temporary governments in this world pray for them pray for the see right here so the petition part if the petition part was praying for yourself the intercession part is when you actually pray for others now here's where you get a lot of credit guys 
praying for other people not only those you know that you love and that love you but actually praying for those that actually you know try to trip you up from now to now you know time and again you pray for those that you know hold a grudge against you you know you pray for those you might hold a grudge against and that's it you pray for your enemies you get you get, you get a lot more you get a lot of credit for those you get a lot you get more credit for praying for um the the enemies than you do praying for the the friends let's see what else he says there intercession which is the second form of prayer springs from love of one's neighbors okay now we have we we learn that we have to love our neighbors we have to learn we have to learn to love everybody not just our loved ones like i said those who love us but you know um, not all of our neighbors, you know, who care about us like we care about them or care about us like, you know, they should. So if you can have the love for this neighbor, then you can start to pray for them. You know, you start or it could be the vice versa. You could start praying for them first and then get the, 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 the but it says right there, it springs from love of one's neighbor. OK, he says, look right here. He says, pray for your brothers, both near and far. OK, so he's talking about of course those you know in our country that you know may live afar but he's also talking about other nations too particularly right here look he says nations suffering from the consequences of war this this there's a lot of you know countries that are being torn now and you know believe it or not a lot of these countries are descendants of the chosen seed some of these countries some of these people in some of these third world nations have promises on their life too and you know these are our actual brothers even though you know we may know it or they may know it they may not know it or we may not know it um just generally praying for these people you know whether they are or whether they aren't will 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 benefit uh not only them you know but you know we get credit for it too and those suffering from tyranny of of temporary governments in this world the temporary is because what he's alluding to is that these governments will one day come to an end. Remember, there's a rock that comes down, according to the book of Daniel. And, you know, there's a rock that comes down that um, destroys the the uh, the fourth beast or the world systems of 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 of, of, of today will one day be destroyed. But let's look at verse 49. He says, prepare yourselves, O my children, pray for your brothers and sisters but also during the intercession you must know how to ask for it is the spirit that is important if your brother or sister your parent or your children are ill pray for them but do not insist that they stay in this life if that is not what the spirit needs better to ask that their spirit be free that it be purified of the sufferings and that the pain promotes spiritual elevation that is why the master taught you in the second era to say, Father, your will be done. For the father knows better than any of his children what the spirit needs. Okay, I changed the uh, font on it so we can get the whole verse on the page. But look at right here. It says, Pray, prepare yourselves, uh, my children. And that means preparation in the law. That's one thing the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is not wanting us to understand is that we have to actually obey the law, the scripture, the Torah, as we talked about a few minutes ago. He says, uh, pray for your brothers and your sisters, but also during the intercession, you must know how to ask, for it is the spirit that is important. Now, this is what, this is um, why we do classes on chapter 17, is because we have the command to teach how to pray. Um, turns out humanity, and, may, and I didn't, I'm, I'm gonna speak up and be the first to say, yeah, my prayer was in was not um, in alignment with the scripture, and I think a lot of us have to understand that and actually do what it says there. We must know how to ask, for it is the spirit that is important. It's the spirit that is important, not the material. And a lot of our prayers were materialistic, but we're gonna get into that. He says, if your brother or sister, your parents or your children are ill, uh, pray for them, but do not insist that they stay in this life if that is not what the spirit needs. Meaning if, 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 it's, if the person, in some cases, the person who is, whose material flame is about to be extinguished uh, will be better off 
that if the, if if you could somehow pray and change that, like if you could pray and make them live longer, they they would suffer more. They would be uh, not so not so. They would be in a worse place. Like man, you should have just let it me let me die, you know, kind of uh, deal. So you when it's when it's when somebody's and I hate to say it like this, when somebody's on their deathbed, praying that they stay alive may not be to your benefit or theirs. I think is what I'm understanding out of that. It says better to ask for the spirit to be free, right? Better to ask that the person um um, the spirit be free. The spirit can be free here on the earth. It, 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 that's not what it's saying. You're not praying for their death. The spirit can be free on the earth, but if the body is not able to, you know, sustain it, it's the body that we're talking about. And so sometimes it's necessary for the spirit to separate itself from that body and go on. So that what can happen here? Look what happens when that when that does purified of the sufferings. You know, the sufferings goes away. Um, and that pain promotes spiritual elevation, and this is deep. You know, that's kind of because of death sounds painful. From what I understand in the scripture, death sounds painful. Whether you go, whether you die peacefully or on your deathbed or not, the separation from the spirit and the body sounds like it hurts. And so I believe that's what it's saying here when he says, "And that the pain promotes spiritual elevation." You know, only because of the order. See how to look at the order there. First, you're purified of the sufferings, which means that the body is gone. The, the body no is already purified, and then now, after that's gone on, now we're talking about the pain that you that that person has suffered, and that pain being used, you know, to promote spiritual elevation, meaning that they get to you know go to some of those higher uh, dwelling places that we talked about earlier. Hmm, something to think about. But we're gonna go on. He says, "This is why the master taught you in the second era to say, Father, when." Uh, your will be done father your will be done what is it say? for the father knows better than any of his children what the spirits needs and we learn it may not be right here but we learn when we say father your will be done that's a huge um, um, element to any prayer because we are choosing his will you know we are choosing his will over ours and he will he will he will do so he you ask for his will he will give you his will you know and it's always going to be better off than our will no matter what the outcome is no matter how it appears to us or what we understand his will is always better for everybody everybody okay but let's go on verse 50 says um and that, and, and that word era up there he's he's referring to the time period we're in which is why we have a third testament of the bible at all we, this is the third era. The first era, we got the books of Moses and the, what they call the Old Testament. The second era, we got uh, the Gospels, you know, which talk, you know, introduced us to Yahushua HaMashiach. And here we're in the third era. This is the third area. This this uh, tribulation time period, this end times time period, uh, is actually the beginning of another era. And going into this era, we have a another guy to go on. We had the first guy, the second guy. This is the third guy. The actual book of the Shepherd of Hermas must be read frequently for real and lasting effects. Do not stop reading the Shepherd of Hermas or practicing its teachings before consulting the Creator. Let's look at 50. He says, The third form of prayer, adoration of the Divine Spirit, means the adoration of all that is perfect. For by means of that prayer you may unite with that perfection, with the love that embraces all the universe. In adoration you may find the perfect state that each of you must achieve and through adoration arrive at the contemplation that united to prayer will bring you to unity with the divine spirit to the source that day after day gives you the strength to come to the kingdom of the Father. The third form of prayer, okay, so we're writing this down, is adoration of the divine spirit, the love of the Father, showing appreciation for him. These are our thank yous, guys. These are when we show him, and I would argue, from what I understand, we're supposed to pray. We, that's supposed to be one of the first things out of our mouth when we when we pray. It goes something to the effect, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thank you for all you have been doing for us let your will be done give me wisdom blah 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 that's one of the elements is what I'm saying the thank you part uh, is one of the first elements of you know a, a good effective prayer and that's what we're doing here remember we are learning to pray in chapter 17 of the third testament of the bible it teaches us how to pray now notice this part right here says for by means of that prayer you may unite with perfection now that's a big that's a big phrase there guys so from what i'm gathering for this so the adoration of the divine spirit is a type of prayer by which if you can do this perform this effectively you know put this element into your prayer effectively unites with that perfection to me you know means that we get closer to him and you know to some of the stuff you can feel guys it ain't all just you know spiritual and you know you imagine that you know this is actually taking place in the background some of this stuff will actually move you and get you you know physically stirred up you know and you you know which is you know one of the gifts that the father gives us you know to you know inspire us sometimes is um uh, uh material manifestation within our bodies but let me go on with the love that embraces all the universe he says in adoration you may find the perfect state that each of you must achieve through adoration arrive at contemplation so adoration then contemplation okay now notice that part you 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 adoration and then you're arriving at contemplation that united to prayer will bring you the unity with the divine spirit okay so and this is this is the kind of stuff we why we do these bible studies so we can bring these really tight details out now this one is a nappy one right here i'm having a little trouble with it so let's let's talk about it with it down in the in the comments there but he's really trying to get us to understand the elements of prayer so that we can you know basically do it do it effectively you know but let's go on he says to the source of eternal life to the source that day after day gives you the strength to come to the kingdom of the father talking about the father in heaven that created the heaven and the earth see the end right there guys so let's go on to 51 he says in this way you should pray beginning with petition until arriving at contemplation this is what gives you strength okay now this is when you're going to wish you had to pull it out your pencil and paper because look okay he, he's going from petition to contemplation and we have to have all of those elements in there to really understand what he means so 46 tells us the four parts petition intercession adoration and contemplation so we we proceed through those three now i'm having to do a little bit of backtracking on what i said earlier about my argument about the um the thank yous come first because you know i'm looking at the verses and it looks to say otherwise that these are a you know a proper order there and you know of course we see all of the elements um to those there right well let's see what else he says here uh beginning with petition until arriving at at contemplation this is what gives you strength all right this is where our strength is going to come from this memory said it was the most powerful weapon well you can imagine if somebody gives you the most powerful weapon you're going to have to you know have the strength to wield that weapon and yeah you you will have that strength and it will not only be you know useful for you wielding the weapons of prayer but they, they actually just that strength you can actually do other stuff you know you know just because I like the weight lift don't mean I ain't going to be able to open them jars up kind of thing. All right, let's, let's go on. Um, when you are well prepared, you will struggle not only for yourselves, but also for your brothers to move along this road. For you cannot achieve salvation for yourselves alone, but rather must struggle to achieve salvation for humanity. Yep, see, that's what I was talking about. Some of these verses are nappy, meaning they're really tight. They got a lot that they're using a few words in order to to talk about huge stuff you know some of these verses you could actually write a whole book about you know if you started expounding on you know what all they're trying to say in here but let's see if we can pull out a few of these all right you know, i know i'm missing stuff too but let's see what's in here 
He says, when you are well prepared, again, talking about the law, talking about obedience, talking about Leviticus 23, talking about Exodus uh, chapter 20 uh, through chapter 24, verse 7, um, talking about the Sermon on the Mount, you know, he says, you will struggle not only for yourselves, but also for your brothers to move along this road. Well, this is one of the things you learn. As you walk along this spiritual journey, you learn that you, we have to struggle for our brothers too. For look what it says there. For you cannot achieve salvation for yourselves alone. See, no man is an island. As, as it turns out, the way in which we are to be saved includes our brother. And it includes brotherly love. It includes us actually going out and doing something for our brother. That's what he's, that's what he's saying there. When he says, for you cannot achieve salvation for yourselves alone, but rather must struggle to achieve salvation of humanity. I mean, you got to get out there and get do good works. You got to go out there and be an example. You got to go out there and imitate the father. You got uh, you got to go out there and imitate the Messiah. You got to you got to get out there and do stuff. You got to heal the sick. You got to cleanse the lepers. You got to cast out demons. You actually got to do something. You are the salt of the earth. Like I said, you are the light of the world. You, you can't just be covered up, you know, and you know, you actually have to do stuff for humanity. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. If you got something out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. We do answer comments still. And uh, pray for us. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.